Gino brought an allergy to it uh, and a very clear, well, I would put it down as just an honesty. You could, you could feel off him an honesty and a loyalty and an integrity and it's certainly a passion commitment to the Republican Socialist ID. And that rubbed off on you. And before you knew it, you were you were back to six, seven days a week. Uh, and some people wondered that the big fella ever sleep. He was on the go seven days a week, seven nights a week. And that was to rebuild this organization. And he did so. He despised anyone who said, you know, like I'm the leader, I know everything. Um, he wanted just to be referred to as, as the same as all, all the rest of the, the membership. He didn't see himself as being anything special. Although, once you spent time in his company, you knew that there was something there was something special there. That his sole raison d'etre was the, the, the development and, and the further progression of, of the Republican Socialist Movement. And at, when he came out of prison, as I said, particularly the Irish Republican Socialist Party. Now, at the end of the day, there's others who, who will have seen him in a different light. There's others who will have experienced different things. Um, personally, what I experienced was a man of intense integrity and dedicated to, to the Republican Socialist ideas, as I've said. Um, honest. And looking to, to drive and push something forward. Sometimes, you know, sometimes really with a vigour that, that maybe frightened some people um, and some people found it hard to keep up with them because come Friday or Saturday people like a wee bit of time to their own and Gino was forever knocking at the door and saying you know let's do it now instead of leaving it the next day. Um, he probably was sowing the seeds and preparing the movement to be able to move forward in the event of anything happened to him because he'd have been very conscious of what happened to those before him like Ronnie Bolton, Dr. Marion Daly uh, and Costello, Tal Power etc. So he was conscious of that, he didn't really discuss it too much. Um, what, he, what he looked at was let's get the office into a functioning uh, working uh, place and let's get something out on the streets so people can read and let's engage with people. Well I think really, I mean, uh, with them being so heavily influenced uh, and rightly so by, by the, the writings of Ta Power, um, he had witnessed a lot of the things that Ta Power talked about and just having that sort of room and space to sit back and analyse it for himself, he realised that, that Power was correct in his critique, the first ever in-depth critique of the Republican Socialist Movement of its positive stuff but also its feelings. So when Gino realised that you know you have to ensure that there's no power bases, there's no clicks, that it has to be what it was designed to do. It has to be there to raise awareness and consciousness among the working class, the educate them, to create that mass movement, to organise and agitate. If you're going to you know, basically be part of something that's devoid of any politic, and then it isn't going to work. Then it's going to create more hardship on an already oppressed working class. And Gio realised that and tried to set about certainly the foundations to take us forward, which has proven that, you know, those who, who were involved in this assassination, like many times before, believed you know, that once the head is removed, uh, then the whole lot will collapse.
Okay, folks, thanks for coming here today. As we remember, volunteer Gino Gallagher on his 25th anniversary. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank the family, obviously, the Gallagher family, for coming. I fought are with them today, as they remember their husband and father and son, grandfather. Firstly, I'd like to call for the reefs to be laid. The first reef staff and volunteers of the Irish National Liberation Army. The Irish Republican Socialist Party. Have a minute of silence. Pat, Bonnie. Comrades and friends, it is a great honour to have been asked to speak here today as we remember Gino Gallagher, NLA Chief of Staff and RSP National Organiser, a volunteer soldier of the highest degree, a political activist, a revolutionary thinker and strategist who walked in the footsteps of Connolly, Mallows, Costello and Power before him. I want to also take this opportunity to thank the Gallagher family for their presence with us today. For it was his family, and it will always be his family, who would feel the full brunt of Gino's absence in their lives. Alongside being heavily involved in the political arena on all fronts, Gino was first and foremost a family man. A much, much loved husband, father and son. And it's a privilege to stand alongside Gino's loved ones today as we remember and commemorate him. There was nothing highly unusual about Gino's childhood growing up in Devis Flats. He grew up in a typical working class family, loving to look after the younger children whilst his mother Teresa worked. Gino's parents were both active Republicans. His late father, Paddy, a Dublin man, was imprisoned in Port Lisa jail. member of the Republican Socialist Movement. During the dark times, Gino, like many other young men and women growing up in working class nationalist areas throughout the occupied six counties, faced many obstacles, including the daily harassment from the Brits and the Unionist militia, the RUC. Gino searched to find his place. He decided to join the Merchant Navy, to travel the world and carve out a life for himself and his mother worked long and hard to pay the fees at this appeal. Paying a visit home to his family in Divis, Gino noticed the lot had changed. Pensions were high and daily rats were the norm. Many of Gino's childhood friends had joined the Irish National Liberation Army, a movement he knew a lot about. Gino discarded his Navy uniform and never returned, instead joining the ranks of the NLA. Gino, along with his comrades based in Divis and the Lower Falls, formed a much feared active service unit which carried out many operations against the Crown forces. It was, it was at this time the state forces, along with their puppets and loyalism, became increasingly aware of the serious threat posed to them by Gino and his comrades. This brought constant raids and arrests, but Gino carried on. Life was now very different. 
and each day brought the real risk of arrest, imprisonment or death. Something Tino accepted as part of the revolutionary's life. Tino admitted that he had little interest in politics and did not pay much attention when he was younger. This he later admitted changed once he was in prison. He emerged from jail with a very clear understanding of what had to be done after reading Pat Parr's analysis of the RSM. Tino moved within a day or two of release from prison to begin putting Pat's vision into practice and reality. He travelled the country engaging with many former members of the Irish Republican Socialist Party and completely renovated Costello House in preparation for the party's return. He succeeded in what he intended to do and there is no doubt whatsoever that without the vision, commitment and energy of Dino there may well not have been a movement moving forward in the 90s paving the way for the strong and vibrant movement we see today. The devastating impact of Dino's loss brought with it a determination from his comrades to build a party and movement which would be a lasting tribute to him. Over the last number of years especially we have witnessed a serious growth in the movement both north and south of the country. New recruits to the party are always interested in learning about Gino Gallagher. Older comrades who knew him well are always bristling with pride as they recruit the many stories with Gino centre stage. There is absolutely no dispute that Gino, along with his comrades, set the foundations in place for the current membership of the RSP de Valdor. We are living in a time when the question of Irish unity is on more and more people's lips and the RSP believe that the roadmap to our ultimate goal of the establishment of an Irish Workers' Republic, the final and lasting tribute to Gino and all our fallen martyrs lies before us all more than ever today. We owe the last 25 years of our existence, of our political and community activism to Gino Gallagher, a selfless, a selfless sacrifice and one we shall never forget. Comrade, revolutionary leader, thank you very much. Just going to present the gift now, folks, to uh, the Gallagher family on behalf of the Republican Socialist Movement. I first met Gino in 1984 in Crumman Road Jail. Gino would come in after a, an attack on a flat in Lenadun where uh, Gino's friend and comrade uh, died, Bonanza McCann. So I didn't really get to know him too well until uh, later on where both of us were sentenced. Uh, we went to the hitch blocks. And what I do recall like, was that the NLA prisons were in disarray. And what we had on top of that like, was the professional campaign of Undermine Absorb. So, the start of 1987, like what we've seen, like was the assassination of Tap Power and John Reilly. Gino went about a campaign of reorganising within the prison, and he was fairly successful in it, even though there was a lot of confusion among LA prisoners in terms of what was going on, um, particularly among the country folk um, who weren't aware of all the personalities involved in the politics. So Gino reorganised, and on the 8th of August 1988, Gino led a section of LA prisoners off the wings in order to try and establish an independent ANLA block. And this was in direct response to the undermine and absorb campaign by the provisionals. So we tried that there and we failed. Like we had an independent block for about a year. Uh, we made a decision to go back to the wings uh, in order to maintain the ANLA presence within the blocks. Now we, we were aware that there may be a possibility of expulsions by the provisionals. So back to the blocks in 1989, towards the end of it, and what we seen like was the expulsion of Gino Gallagher. This was a petty, vindictive move by the provisionals. Uh, Gino was doing OC of the MI prisoners, quite entitled to be in the blocks, yet they refused him admittance. So he spent the rest of his time in McGabry and got released in 1992. And Gino would have came up and seen me on a number of visits. And then when I was going out in Proles in 1993, um, I'd have been up and uh, stayed in Gino's house, stayed in Belfast. We had quite a bit of engagement. 
And I ended up at the year's end, like um, I would have got out at the very end of 1993. Uh, I had tied in with Gino one other times. Uh, basically, got the news of his death um, by a phone call in Belfast, which took me by completely by surprise. So my belief and the belief of uh, like presence at that time in the Saban area, like was, it was a move by the professionals. So we jumped all back on board again in order to defend the movement. And we went up to uh, Gino's funeral. We later found out who was behind um, Gino's killing. Um, and what I can say is that the NLA executed every single individual like, who was involved in the conspiracy. And also a number of years later, executed the person who pulled the trigger. Um, and thankfully, the NLA was able to wrap it up fairly quickly. So what happened you know, the following, the following day, like um, or two days later after Gino was shot, we all raved up, uh, stayed overnight in Belfast for the funeral. We, the tensions was palpable. Um, the REC had swamped the area, it was saturated. Uh, so on the day, like when Virginia was, uh, was getting taken out by the Cold Party, the REC attacked it. At this point, like I was around to the side, uh, and all I can remember, like it was some big dopey cop coming at me with, with a baton. And I can, my recollection, like, is. But whatever I got on them, like I was hurling back because I didn't want to be responsible for kicking off a red at a funeral. I didn't know what was going on, actually going on at the front. So me and the cop had to, get, had to go. But what sticks in my mind that day, like was a child, like who was, was seriously injured and was taken away in an ambulance. So the tensions, you know, the cop went back in again, and the funeral was arranged for the next day. There was all sorts of negotiations going on between the family, the RSP, priests, and the cops. So an agreement was made uh, that even though the uh, funeral was saturated by the REC the following day, they, they did pull out. And I think sort of one of the, one of the things about uh, what happened at the funeral, whenever the, the cops did move on, was that the following day, the presence at the, at, at the funeral had probably doubled. So both the cops had failed like, in, in terms of disrupting the funeral, and at a later stage, those who were involved in the conspiracy behind Gino's uh, murder failed miserably as well. They thought that they would uh, do away with the movement and look where we are today. A fully vibrant, uh, grown movement. I don't know what Gino would think today after this here, who can say, but I suspect that he would be well pleased at how we implemented the Thai power principles in, 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 in terms of bringing the movement from 25 years ago to where it is today. Well, I mean, I, I was here in 1987 and the mood when the word came through the Thai power and uh, Big John O'Reilly had been assassinated and two other comrades had, had been seriously injured. Um, w w was very dark and turbulent times. Uh, and a lot of people, including those who were behind it, believed that that was the end of the RSM. And when you fast forward, um, on the morning of it, I was the last to see um, Gino Gallagher alive. Um, I was going down to the shop, facing the centre to, to get the morning papers. And he got out of a black taxi and the two of us were having a brief conversation and I asked him where he was going. He told me he was going down to, to the uh, brew. Uh, he had received a letter that he had to go down something about his, his unemployment benefit. And he was on his way over first to, to the office to open it up and he was working on something. He, he didn't tell me what it was but he told me he was working on, on something on the computer that he, as I say earlier, he had been learning the, uh, the, the computer. So I asked him that he want me to go with him. He said no, and I told him I'd see him later, and away he went. And about two hours later, um, a local Republican called into my mother's house and informed me that that Gino had been assassinated in the brew. Of course, you know, he just didn't believe it. I, I rushed over to, to the office where there there'd been a couple of people had had heard it as well. We travelled down. To the brew, and unfortunately, that was confirmed as, as, as having happened. Um, like having your heart ripped out. It was like a rerun of all that went before. Uh, this time, but for me personally, a lot worse. Not only was he related to to, to us, he um, uh, uh, there was a, there was a strangeness in, involved in it that you just couldn't believe. Um, I came in and turned on the computer, or sorry, the computer was still on. And what I'd been doing was typing out 
the rule of honour. Because even though Easter was a few months off, that was the type of them. Don't put it off till tomorrow. You know, get it done now. And he was learning to use the computer and he, he was typing out the rule of honour. And the next name, obviously, we had to put on it was his. Um, an extremely heartbreaking time. But what it did do was it rallied people together. We realised that those that were behind it, including the unseen hands, their reason that was to finish this movement once and for all. It wasn't people like Jim Gallagher they, they were afraid of, or, or people like myself or anybody else. It was the politics. And anybody who could articulate that properly and was, was a force that would rally people and drive people forward had to go. I know they finish off in terms of you know, my sort of feelings towards Gino, Tap, her, Patsy O'Hara. It was an honour. And it was a, a privilege to have walked in the shadow of giants. As we pushed on, and in 2016, we're sitting here now with a membership three times the size that it was. People are joining on a daily basis, and we are moving forward. And it was uh, an absolute honour to be involved with someone who I believe, as I said before, was a catalyst for that. Um, those that in the 70s that had, had led the path, and things had risen and things had fallen down again, up and down, positive and negative. Gallagher took that by the scruff and, and, and made us all very proud once again to be.